Iran's foreign minister Abbas Arachi warned Israel against launching an attack, saying any strike on Iranian infrastructure would be met with a stronger retaliation. Abbas Arachi spoke at a gathering marking the October 7th anniversary of the Hamas attack on Israel, where Iranian officials lauded the assault as a major achievement by the so-called Resistance Axis, a network of regional militant groups backed by Iran. We recommend the Zionist regime not to test the resolve of the Islamic Republic. If any attack against our country takes place, our response will be more powerful, Arachi said in a televised speech. Meanwhile, the Israeli military piled more pressure on Lebanon's Iran-backed Hezbollah, eliminating the commander of Hezbollah's headquarters in a strike in the area of Beirut, it said in a statement. If confirmed, the death of Suhail Hussein Husseini would be a result of Israel's strategy of inflicting major blows by assassinating leaders and commanders of Hezbollah and its ally Hamas, which has been fighting Israel in Gaza for a year. In the biggest blow to Hezbollah in decades, Israel killed its leader Hassan Nasrallah with an airstrike in Beirut's southern suburbs late last month. After a series of devastating Israeli operations against Iran's main proxy group, the Lebanese Hezbollah and the killing of its leader Hassan Nasrallah, the Islamic Republic launched a large missile barrage against Israel on October 1. This was the second Iranian missile attack since April, but like the earlier operation, it inflicted little damage. The Israeli government immediately vowed a punishing retaliation, but so far, no attack has taken place. Echoing Supreme Leader Ali Khamenei, Arachi reaffirmed that Tehran stands fully behind the resistance, with its full strength and support. However, beyond its stockpile of hundreds of ballistic missiles, Iran has limited military capacity to effectively challenge Israel, which boasts far more advanced military and weapon systems. Despite launching around 300 ballistic missiles, along with drones and cruise missiles, in two large-scale attacks, Iran has achieved little success. Most of the projectiles have been intercepted by Israeli and allied anti-air defenses, rendering the assaults largely ineffective. ما به رژیم صهیونیستی توصیه می کنیم که اراده جمهوری اسلامی ایران رو آزمایش نکنه. اگر هر حمله ای به کشور ما صورت بگیره، پاسخ ما قدرتمندانه تر و پرقدرت تر از گذشته خواهد بود. که سیاست جمهوری اسلامی ایران حمایت از مقاومت هست این سیا یک سیاست اصولی هست که قبلا بوده الان هم هست و در آینده هم خواهد بود و به هیچ وجه ما از این سیاست عدول نخواهیم کرد رایزنی های اگر صورت میگیره برای توقف جنایات هست برای محکوم کردن رژیم صهیونیستی است و برای اینکه به هر حال این تلاشی که رژیم صهیونیستی برای گسترش جنگ به کل منطقه داره ازش جلوگیری بشه. خانم The Israeli military displayed on Sunday thousands of weapons and equipment it said were seized from Hamas. Ahead of the one-year anniversary of Hamas October 7th attack, the Israeli army showed thousands of weapons it said were seized from the militant group which were used in Israel during the onslaught as well as others taken during the past year of operations inside Gaza and Lebanon. The military, which created the display at a sprawling army base south of Tel Aviv, said it has retrieved more than 5,000 AK-47 assault rifles from Gaza and destroyed double that number, as well as seized thousands of other items including drones, explosives, RPGs, scuba equipment, machine guns, sniper rifles, anti-tank missiles, and weapons manufactured both inside Gaza as well as in Iran, Russia, and North Korea. The army also displayed homemade explosives it said Hamas used to burst through the border barrier on October 7, which it said were crafted specifically after years of studying Israel's border during years of Hamas-organized violent protests along the fence, including as early as 2018. What Hamas did on October 7 was storm Israel with all their abilities at one time, 
said Israeli military spokesperson Lt. Col. Nadav Shoshani. He said that the Israeli military had seized the weapons from Hamas and Hezbollah in Lebanon to study the types of weapons used as well as track where they came from. As Israel prepares for a day of somber memorials marking a year since the attacks, the military said it was increasing troop presence in Israel's south to protect memorials taking place along the Gaza border. A large memorial planned by bereaved families was expected to draw a crowd of more than 40,000 in Tel Aviv, but will be broadcast with only direct family members and media in attendance due to warnings from the military of possible rocket attacks from Lebanon. Hamas-led militants killed some 1,200 people in the October 7 attack and took another 250 hostage. They are still holding around 100 captives, a third of whom are believed to be dead. Nearly 42,000 Palestinians have been killed in Gaza since the start of the war, according to the Gaza Health Ministry. It does not say how many were fighters, but says a little more than half were women and children. This helps the IDF prepare for battle better and learn and study our enemies better. What we put here together is a display of what Hamas used, but this is just a fracture of it. It's examples of what Hamas used on October 7th to carry out uh, uh, the October 7th massacre, the, uh, one of the world's largest terror attacks in history and definitely in Israel's history, the worst terror attack ever. Um, and what we saw here, we saw different types of explosives, uh, RPGs. We saw the different munitions they used. They were ready to um, to infiltrate Israel. They had the right measurements of the Israeli fence. Uh, they had uh, uh, soldiers equipped. They had guns. They had trucks, uh, and they had everything prepared for this terror attack against Israeli civilians. What Hamas did on October 7th was storm Israel with all their abilities at one time. One thing they did is fire rockets uh, north of 3,000 rockets in one day, enormous amounts, um, uh, and also use different types. 